Today we're starting a new series looking at content mappings in disguise. If you're new here, my name's Rich and I'm making these videos to help you one up your live event production workflows. If you're unfamiliar, content mapping is the process of transferring content from the timeline to the screens on the stage. If you look in the user manual on the Disguise website, you'll find eight different types of content mapping. In this series, we're gonna take an in-depth look into four of these mappings, which we use on tour in almost every show that we do. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on direct mapping. But first, a quick history lesson. In earlier versions of Disguise, content mappings were referred to as projections. If memory serves me correctly, around R11 and earlier. The name was later changed to mappings to avoid any confusion with video projectors. I'm mentioning this because if you have any experience with 3D software packages, applying a texture to a model is commonly referred to as a projection. If you understand this concept, it can serve as a helpful starting point to, to understand mappings. A mapping allows you to take content from the timeline and apply it to a particular screen or group of screens on your stage. Content could be stills or video that you've added to your disguise project folder, or it could be content generated entirely by a layer on the timeline. The first thing I'm going to show you is where we can find our mappings within the layers on the timeline. It lives in the default section at the top of the layer. A lot of the time you're going to be working with a video layer as that's how we bring our video and stills content in supplied to us by our content teams. However, as I mentioned previously, any layer capable of generating or modifying content is likely to have the mapping parameter. We'll take a quick look at the radar module and also the test pattern module. If you've watched our first day in disguise video, then you'll have used the mapping already. But in that video, we didn't really focus on what was happening. Every time you create a new screen in disguise, it automatically creates a mapping that is associated with it. That mapping is a direct mapping. Direct mappings are the simplest mappings in disguise. They take your content and apply it directly onto some or all of your screens. Even with more complicated screens, Direct mappings follow the UV map of the screen exactly. Let's start by showing you the auto creation of direct maps when we create screens. To get a baseline, let's open the mappings menu from our video layer and take a look at the existing mappings in the project. Here you can see the mappings that we have to start with. To add a screen, go to the stage menu and click on the plus sign in either the LED or the projection surface sections and then give the screen a name. I'm actually going to add two screens to our project. We'll set their dimensions space them out and give them a resolution. If you've made it this far, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss part two, which will be coming out very soon. Now, if we go back to the video layer on the timeline and open the mappings menu again, we'll see that the mappings with the names that we gave for our new screens have automatically been generated. You'll notice that Disguise has included direct in the label for the mapping to indicate the type of mapping. If the content aspect is different from the screen aspect ratio, you can choose to crop fit, stretch, or apply the content pixel perfect onto the screens. Right click the content and choose your desired behavior from the menu. Okay, Editor Rich here. It's a few days later and I've stalled on the best way to show disguise cropping feature. I think I wanted to start by talking a little bit about aspect ratio. If you don't know what aspect ratio is, it's essentially the word that we use to describe the dimensions of a flat piece of content. So, for example, an aspect ratio that you will know very well is 16 by 9. A lot of TVs and projectors are 16 9. And what that means is the ratio between the length of the width and the length of the height, the, for, for every 16 units of width, there are 9 units of height. And this is really important when it comes to mapping content because um, in order to make sure that our content isn't stretched or squashed, we want to make sure that we're applying content of the correct ratio so that the content aspect ratio matches the aspect ratio of the screen. So in this case, this is a 16 9 piece of content being applied to a 16 by nine screen, or we will do something, and this is where Disguise's cropping features come in to um, facilitate that not stretching or squishing. So I think the best thing that I can do here is um, just show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna create a new video layer. Uh, we're gonna just call this aspect demo. And I want a uh, video layer. So uh, it's in the search box, FIFA video layer. There we go. So here's our new video layer. I'm just gonna line it up on top of the one that is sending our content to the 69 in the center and then we'll add the same test pattern. So the first thing you'll notice is, is that 
um, when we apply that same piece of content, both to a 169 screen and to a, we call this a square screen or one by one. So essentially the width and the height are exactly the same size. So they have a one to one ratio. Um, and as I was saying previously in the more scripted sort of um, part of this demo, you can right click a piece of content, come down to this um, uh, cropping tab and the default for all pieces of content when they're brought into disguise is clipped canvas. So what this means is if your content is within the correct ratio for the screen, it's just going to display it. So, you know, pixel for pixel, direct map. Um, if we're, if the aspect of the screen is different to the aspect of the content, so in this case, our one by one square, what it's going to do is it's going to clip off the sides in this case, um, so that nothing in the center is cropped. So ultimately what we're doing is we're just looking like through a window into this content and we're taking the square portion out of the middle of it. Um, and that's what clip to canvas does. The alternative to clip to canvas is stretch to canvas. No. Fit to canvas, sorry. My bad. Um, you could tell this is now a live demo. So uh, fit to canvas um, essentially takes your content and makes sure all of the fix pixels um, fit within your screen. Now, in order to do this without squashing or stretching your content, you're going to end up either pillar boxing or letter boxing. So pillar boxing is where you end up with black pixels on the left and right, creating a very narrow um, piece of content with and with the black on either side. Or what we've got here is uh, letterbox com content where we've got the content uh, in the middle and then uh, black top and bottom. So this is still a 69 piece of content, but we're only op we're op occupying the largest 69 area within this square screen. As I previously revealed to you accidentally, the next um, sort of cropping type is stretched canvas. Now this. I'm not really sure why we would use this, but it's good to have it kind of in the toolkit anyway. Ultimately, what it's doing is it's taking this content and it's um, forcing the content into the size of screen that you've got, completely ignoring the fact that it's not the correct aspect ratio for for that screen. So as you can see, this is what the content should look like. And this is what it ends up looking like when we use the stretched canvas cropping type. The last one is pixel perfect. and I, when I set the parameters for this screen, you'll see I set the resolution to 720 by 720. Um, essentially, what this is, essentially what this does is it looks at the resolution of your content um, and then takes a look at the resolution of your screen and puts your content pixel for pixel. So pixel perfect. Um, this piece of content is 1920 by 1080 pixels. And we've grabbed a 720 square out of the center of this. If you think um, our content is 1080 high, if we were to take the largest 1080 resolution that we could get into a square, that would be 1080 by 1080 pixels. So that would look a little bit more like clipped canvas, but would give us a pixel perfect 1080 pixels in the center there. Okay, that was a quick demo on how to use the four different cropping types in disguise. We're now going to move on and have a look at how we can use direct maps to send content from one layer to multiple different screens. So here we go. This is the project that we were just looking at with our cropping demo. And right now we have a single layer on the timeline, which is sending content to a single screen, which is surface one. If we open our layer and then we, instead of left clicking and we get our mapping picker, we can right click and that shows us a box that allows us con to configure the details of that particular mapping. So right now, this is the resolution of the mapping, 1920 by 1080, and these are the screens that we're sending it to. If we hit the plus on the uh, bottom of this, we get the available places that we can send that content to. So we don't have our, I've hidden the projector from the scene, and we have our three screens, surface one, screen two, screen three. Something that we could do if I add screen three to this mapping, now we've got our single layer with a single piece of content being sent to two different screens. And if you notice up here, I've created just two keyframes to change the opacity. So 
when we play through, those two screens will respond to any of the keyframe parameters on that layer. So that can really speed up. If you need to send exactly the same thing to uh, multiple different places, then using direct maps can be a really great way to do that. You might be wondering, however, why I haven't added screen two into the mapping. So let's do that and see what happens. So we're gonna right click on our mapping there, this time add the plus and now screen two. So what you'll see here is that the content on screen two has been squashed into that um, 1080 square that we've got. So if I just right click to bring up the parameters for this screen, you'll see that the resolution is 1080 by 1080. So Disguise has squashed that 1920 by 1080 content into a 1080 by 1080 square. So those of you who just watched my little demo on cropping might be forgiven for thinking we can go to our content, right click on it and change our clip type. So let's just try and see if we can find a clipping type that modifies that. You see there isn't, we've tried all, all four of them, none of them allow us to get that sort of square back. You can see that sending a single piece of content to multiple screens can be a really powerful thing to do. However, they really need to be at the very least the same aspect ratio, but ideally the same pixel dimensions as well. To make that right, let's remove screen two. And if we wanted to add that using the cor a correct cropping type, I'm just gonna add a new layer, I'll call that screen two to keep everything well labeled. And then so B for video. So we now have a new layer set up of our other one. Um, and on our screen two layer, we're gonna change our mapping to screen two direct and then add a video. So we use two layers and two direct maps to send the same piece of content to three places. The first layer sends it just to our square screen as that has its own resolution. And then for the two 69 screens where they have matching resolutions, we can send them both from the direct map there. Now, it can be a little bit confusing to have um, a disguise generated mapping doing something different from what you would expect it to do. So what I would probably do here is I would probably take that away so that right now the disguise generated map just sends it to surface one in case there's any parts of our show where we need just that single screen being addressed. I come up here, new mapping, and I'd say something like, something descriptive, so both 16, nine screens. I mean, um, uh, create your own naming convention for labeling your mappings, but certainly make it descriptive. So um, we're gonna give this a resolution. So this is us creating a new direct map, 1920 by 1080. So this is where we'd use the resolution of the content. And if we weren't sure about the resolution of the content, we could right click on it and we'd see the resolution right at the top there, 1920 by 1080. So now this layer is sending the content to our new mapping, 93 by 1080, but there's no screens set up in it. So we're gonna open up our screen picker. We're gonna say surface one and screen three. That way we've got exactly what we had before, but ultimately let's say we further on in our show, we wanted to go back to just sending content to surface one. We still have that disguise generated mapping that will allow us to do that. So I could throw back to Scripted Rich. However, he's a little bit useless and uh, all I've got left to do is really to say thank you for joining us um, for this tutorial on direct maps. As we said at the beginning, this is going to be a series. The next one that we're gonna produce is on feed mapping or feed maps. Um, and there's lots of different ways that we can use those and we're quite excited to share that with you. So uh, come back next week where we'll show you feed maps and Thank you for supporting the channel and we'll see you very soon. Thank you for joining the Hive School.